Hello everyone, this is Daniel Fergus from the Dynamic Media Lab, and today I'm going to be going over the basics of how to set up a project in Final Cut Express. Not setting up your project properly can cause a lot of heartache down the road when you're trying to edit a piece and you have to render files that you really shouldn't have to or if you try to open a project and you find that all your media is missing. And this is one of the most common mistakes that people will have when they first begin editing and it's really easy to remedy if you just get in the habit of setting up your project correctly the first time. And with that, let's get started. The first step in setting up your projects is creating a folder. On a Mac all you need to do is control click and choose new folder. And let's name it something that we'll easily remember and we'll be able to refer to at a later date and know around the time that we created it. So for the purpose of this tutorial let's just go September 0908 and the name of the program we'll call Mars Interview. Now what this folder is going to allow you to do is to be able to store all the project files that will be created into one central location. So if you need to move your project to an external hard drive or somewhere else, you can just simply grab the folder and drag it over and you won't have any lost files when you open it up the next time. Now that we have our, now that we have our folder made, now you're ready to open up Final Cut Express. And on the DML computers in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a little application icon and you simply click on there and we'll have a little pop-up that has an alphabetical listing of all the programs that are installed on the computer. So simply find the F for Final Cut Express and let it boot up. Now one of the first screens that you might see pop up is the Choose Setup screen. And what this is asking for is what type of footage you're going to be using in your project. Now this is a pretty important step because this is what's going to be setting your capture settings along with your timeline properties and overall it'll make your editing much more smooth if you get it right the first time. If not you might be having rendering problems. By default it's set to DVNTSC and that's fine because that's what we'll be working with. But if you did have another format you can simply drop down the menu and find a format that will be appropriate for your project. But NTSC is what we'll be working with, so we'll just go with that. And while we're here, I'll let you know that inside the project, once you open it up, there is a function called Easy Setup, and it's basically the same thing. And if you need to change the properties of the timeline within the project, that's the way that you do it. But we know that we want NTSC, so we'll just go with that. Now, one other pop-up that you might see when you're first starting the program is the audio video device connection pop-up and basically if you chose DV as your format it's going to be looking for a firewire connection whether it's a Walkman or your video camera and if it doesn't see it it's gonna ask you to plug it in now you don't have to right now if you don't want to it's fine but at some point you'll need to in order to capture your footage Now once Final Cut is open, one of the first things that you're going to want to do is to save your project. So just go Save As, and we'll put it in the same location as we made our folder. We just go to Local Storage, and click on the second drop-down menu, and click on that. Now I'm going to call it the same thing as the folder's name, just so that I can keep everything on a one-to-one -one ratio, folder to file. So it'll be easier to find if I do a search later. Okay, now once you have the folder saved, one of the next things that you're going to want to do is to tell Final Cut Express where to store all the footage, the render files, the waveform data, and thumbnails that might be generated from the project. Now the best way to do this is to go into Final Cut Express, System Settings, and set your capture scratch. And what this will do is point all the render files and everything back to the central folder that you had created earlier. You're going to need to set four different set buttons. And the first button is to keep all your video capture, and then your audio capture, your video render, and your audio rendering files back to that folder that you originally created. Now, as long as you choose it from the drop down menu. So let's go local storage, September 0908, 
And you are also going to want to do that to your waveform cache, your thumbnail cache, and your autosave vault. Now once you have all your capture scratch settings properly appointed, the next thing you can do is begin to import footage. Now there's more than one way to get footage into Final Cut Express. And one of the easiest ways is if you shoot on a Firestore or some other hard drive based capturing system, all you have to do is drag the file over into your project and it's imported into the browser. But for our purposes, we'll be capturing from tape. So we go File, Capture. And it looks like it's not going to be able to initialize a desk deck. And you remember earlier I said we didn't have the Walkman plugged in. So what I'm going to do is boot down the captured window. And this time when I boot up, I'm going to have the Walkman attached. So I'll be pretty much, I'm just uh, putting the Walkman into the firewire of the computer. And it should recognize it. If you see the play buttons on the bottom of the viewer, you know that you're in good shape because you have control of the device. Just by hitting the play button, it'll activate the Walkman or your camcorder. I'm going to hit stop. One of the first things you'll see off to the side of this screen is a place to put a real name or in our, in our case it'll be a tape name. So I'm just going to call it tape1. And you can put down a description at this point. And we're just going to go Mars interview number one. And once you have everything labeled that you want to capture, what you can do is start reviewing your footage. Okay, let's say we want to start recording right now. I'm going to hit stop and then I'm going to hit capture now. And what that's going to do is just begin recording straight as soon as I hit record. Okay, I'm going to hit stop again to stop recording. And we have a clip over off to our side. And that will work fine. Now, when you're choosing a piece of footage or a sound bite to take from a piece of footage, you're going to want to take a little bit more time before and after the footage. For example, probably five seconds is is good so that you know you're not chopping off words that you're going to want to have in your edit. All right, that's one. That's the quickest way to capture. You can also, there's another way of capturing on, within Final Cut Express, and that's by marking endpoints. You can hit this little tab here, mark in, you see time code. It's going to take an endpoint and an outpoint now for capturing the clip. And what I could do now is go capture clip. And by default, Final Cut Express is pretty smart. It knows that Mars interview number one was the first clip and called Mars interview two the next. And that's what I want. That's fine. I'll hit OK. And this one, this method takes a little bit longer. The Walkman has to initialize and rewind and get back to the points that we initially set. But it's a more exact way of gathering your footage if you want to be frame accurate. Many times if you're in a hurry, Capture Now will get you by, but this is also a good way to capture if you need to. All right, say so we got the two clips that we want. Now we can exit the capture window. And we can see in the browser window that we have our two clips here along with our sequence. One thing that I like to do by, well, by default, Final Cut Express shows thumbnails, which is fine. But I prefer to look at the list view, which is this little icon up here. And what it does is it gives you the information for the clip and it just allows you to be assured that everything is matching to your sequence correctly, your frame size, your video, your video rate, your compressor settings, your audio rate, uh, your pixel aspect ratio, field dominance. If any of those things are off, it's going to make the computer work a little bit harder, causing you to have bars over your video. For example, I have gray bars right now if I drag the video down to the timeline. And that means everything's set perfectly. It'll play back fine. We don't need to render. If you don't have these settings right, you could very easily have red bars up top 
and a screen that says you need to render your footage. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email at dfergus at unr.edu or stop by the Dynamic Media Lab and I can answer any questions you might have then. Thank you for viewing the first tutorial on Final Cut Express and happy editing. Thank you.